had uh, lunch with Charlie today. I was, I was telling him it was awesome. I missed all of that. What was that? Sorry, hang on a second. I'm st- I, I can't hear you anymore. I know, I know. Um, oh, here we go. I think I know why. You don't hear the music either, do you? Uh, no. You don't hear the music anymore when we talk? Uh, no. Okay. Will they tell your story? Let me tell you what I wish I'd known when I was young and dreamed of podcast glory. Mm. You have no control. Who the f- is Avatar? <laughs> I know, I know. I, I got an inside scoop, dude. It's big. What? Who? Ooh, we're gonna wait. Wait for it, wait for it. No, I, I don't have anything. Uh. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> I yeah. No choice. All right. We're about to go live. Wait a minute, we are live. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Hang on. Time remnants. Uh, Yes, there we go. Uh, we're live. Oh, we are live? Yes. Hello. Yes. Through the power of Alanis Morissette, we are now live. Say hello, Bell. Yeah, hello, Bell. Okay. Nice no. Harry Carey here. No, no, no. <laughs> That's not. Hi. Hi. You going to do this? Let me ask you a question. All right. What's your favorite planet? Uh, Mars. Mine's the sun. Okay. <laughs> I like it because it's like the king of planets. Actually, I probably should have said Mercury, all things considered. Why Mercury? Because this is Flash TV talk. Hey. <laughs> hey. Okay. We all know the moon's not made out of green cheese. But if it was made out of barbecue spare ribs, would you eat it then? I I, uh, I know I would. Okay. I'd have seconds. <laughs> and I'd polish it off with a tall, cool Budweiser. <laughs> Did Budweiser pay for that bit sponsorship? I don't know. I'm always curious, like, retroactively on some of this stuff. I know, right? Like, yeah, you, you hear name drops in certain sketches and whatnot, and it's like, hmm, was that a paid promotion or was that an illegal use of a trademark? Yeah, even when, like, they trash the brand, you almost kind of wonder, like, did they did they pay to get trashed? So I always wonder about the scene from Wayne's World where they do the, the, the riff on, like, product placement and selling out. Wayne's World. Yeah, that's that's the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. All this talk about selling out is giving me a headache. Here, I have just what you need. Nuprin, little, yellow. There was different. a WTF episode with, um, what's his face? WTF? Yeah, well, WTF is a podcast. It's kind of a, a kind of a big one. Um, but oh, yeah. I should have known that being in the industry. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, a little bit. Uh, but no, no, no. They, he did an interview with, uh, with what's his, what's his face that, um, Mike Myers and Mike yes. Myers actually talked a lot about like the making of that show. And I think he even very specifically talked about the funding and how, yes, in fact, of course, that sellout sketch or that sellout bit paid for a lot of the movie. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where, you know, when, when they can't, when they have a budget and they can't make the ends meet, that's, that's how they fill it out as they get product placement. I know, but it drives me crazy when that's forced into podcast. And you know, when I get crazy, I like a good hot cup of bean fruit coffee. In fact, if you use the code podcast at beanfruitcoffee.com, you can get 5% off on your next order. Beanfruitcoffee.com. It's delicious. That's absolutely correct. Okay. <laughs> and none of the other- You know what? I, I need, I need to order some bean fruit because I want to try to make some, uh, oh, it's so uh, good. Cold brew. It actually is really good. We've been doing this farm to table thing. You ever you ever heard of this? You, you heard about uh, that? that's where you uh, uh, you you build a farm on your kitchen table. That, that is exactly it. That is verbatim. That is verbatim it. No, this is where uh, local like local produce they they gather it all and you kind of order it and so you kind of subscribe to food, but you subscribe to locally grown food. And so uh, bean fruit being from a local roastery is always included in our box. But like this last past week, uh, we got like this huge, huge amount of collard greens, like tons of collard greens. That's the reason why I can't do any of those farm, t- uh, uh, the, they, they like co-op groups or whatever grow groups that they have here in Austin. That We got the same thing. Yeah. But it's always greens. It's like 30 pounds of greens. But dude, greens are good for you, man. You want to run like the, fra- the Flash Kids? Eat your greens plus caffeinate with Bean Fruit Coffee. At beanfruitcoffee.com, use the code podcast for 5% off on your next order. Uh, that's... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you get. <laughs> all right. Then. All right. Here we go. Welcome to Flash TV Talk, the fan podcast dedicated to reviews, news, and spoilers. Yes? No, not spoilers. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Actually, let me. That's that's an old. That's old. Why is that there? That is. That's been there for years. And you really? Never change it. I've just you been just, an you, autopilot you, the entire time, haven't I? 
yeah, you just say you just yeah, you, you mm-hmm. had one prepared in uh, your head that you say every week, but I, I know, normally week don't you decided to read it. Yeah, I don't re- I don't re- normally read the teleprompter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am the uh, I'm the reverse Ron Burgundy. <laughs> yes, yes, like that commercial that's been coming on recently where they're just like ah because the guys like you know on the keyboard just. <laughs> print A's on the screen. Have you seen that? I have not. I have not. Also, I think I say news reviews. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and change this right the now. News reviews and not spoilers. No, I say and more. CW show. That's what I the say. The By the way, if this is your first time tuning into a uh, live show, um, I promise once we get started, we are far more professional. T- tell them oh, chat sure. room cover for yeah, us. Yeah, tell them chat room cover for us. <laughs> Especially you four CW executives. If you're looking for voice talent. <laughs> Look no further than somewhere else. Uh, hey, hey, speak for yourself. Daddy's got to feed these kids over here. <laughs> That's true. I don't have kids, but I have a dog, and he's a very cute dog. In fact, he's a corgi. And uh, hey, corgis yeah. ain't, they ain't cheap. They got to they got to eat the expensive stuff. You want to keep they them really alive? Do. That's true. All right, let's do this. You ready? I guess. All right, for real this time. All right, it's good. Yeah. You know, I, I missed an opportunity during uh, D Golub eight eight eights review i should have said instead of i'm glad we could expand your fandom i'm glad we could accelerate your fandom that, that's uh. all right the, i like the we take time time travel seriously so you don't have to maybe we should do that for next season all right let's do that probably update some of our th- our bumps and everything gosh when we recorded those bumps it is interesting just that, like how much has changed between now and when we started that show i know right i, I had i had i had a, a one of my podcasts featured in the huffington post today did you really? Which one? Uh, it's called Truth's Table. It's n- like completely a complete gear shift from what the show is. But I mean, like, is uh, yeah, we got we got featured in the 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 Huffington Post. Like, it's like, and the other thing too is like, we've got the studio downtown, and it's awesome. And I'm like, you know, we when we started the show, I remember recording those bumps, getting my wife to do it, <laughs> like talking into the mic, and like at the house, and I don't know, I'm just very reminiscent of what that setup was and <laughs> anyway we've been very blessed we've got a lot of a lot of a lot of fun stuff that's uh that's happening we're actually we're doing we're we're hosting at the studio tomorrow night a um uh we're, we're starting a monthly series in jackson called podcast live we're inviting podcasters from the local area to come in and record a podcast in our studio but we're also doing kind of a, a 20 20 seat very limited seating um live show so people can actually sit in on it um, it's like 10, 10 bucks a head, but you get two drinks, you get a, a free t-shirt satchel is sponsoring it. Uh, and so you get a free satchel t-shirt and some other swag and, uh, yeah, you get in, uh, two, two free or well, not free, but you get two drinks and, uh, and, and a live show for 10 bucks. That's, that's not a, that's not a bad deal at all. No, I'd buy that for a dollar yeah. or however much it costs. Well, it's uh, 10 bucks, but, but one way or the other, it's- I'd buy that for 10 bucks. It's been, it's been pretty good. We're, uh, we're almost sold out actually during the, um, it's tomorrow night at seven o'clock. So I'm, I'm really, I'm interested to see how it goes. I'm replacing all of our lights with like colored lights. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. I actually Be got sure some- to try it out beforehand. So you don't like make some weird color combination that makes people throw up. No, 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 no. So, all right. So I got these shark tank lights, um, like this company that was on shark tank where it's like a Bluetooth controlled smart led. Why? Because I can control it with my Bluetooth. Don't the internet of things. no, but, but please don't tell me you bought a Juicero juicer. No, what? I don't even know what that is. Okay, good. Uh, that's like, yeah, Juicero. Oh, oh God. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's basically a $400 juicer that squeezes juice out of a bag when you can just take the bag and then squeeze the juice out without buying the juicer. And it's an internet connected, like Wi-Fi enabled juicer for okay, $400. That's not the situation here. I'm not trying to internet of things my life. It's just more of like, I want it to be like, if you want to do the thing where you control like what the lights are going to do, you can either get like one of these hubs that connects over Wi-Fi, or you can do the one where it connects over Bluetooth. So you don't need a hub. It just connects directly to the, the light itself. And so I won't okay. in, in, in many respects, it's not the internet of things because it's going Bluetooth as opposed to Wi-Fi, but the Bluetooth of things, it's the Bluetooth of things. Uh, but I got those and it's awesome. So like when people come in, it's going to be green lights for Pottery. But when I talk about like when I do the intro and, and thank our sponsor Satchel, I'm going to change the lights so they'll go from green to orange. Nice. Yeah. It's going to be cool. I'm, um, I'm a little nervous about it, but it'll be good. We got the whole staff that'll be on, on site helping out uh, doing, you know, we've got uh, a list up front. So we've got some people working the door. We've got a bartender. 
And um, I'll be doing MC work. And then uh, uh, one of my team members is going to be doing Instagram and Twitter and, and taking pictures and everything. So should be a lot of fun. This is our kind of our, our soft launch. So we'll see how it goes. That's cool. Yeah. See, cool stuff happens in Jackson. It's just you have to... <laughs> What was this? this Sorry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Working hard here, man. Cool, cool. I'm, I'm trying to make cool stuff happen here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you and like four other people, which is why not a lot of cool stuff happens. Not saying anything to detriment against you. It's just I wish more people would invest more in my home city. Well, if if <laughs> says the guy that moved to Austin. Uh, because no one has any tech jobs there. By the way, everybody that I told where I was staying when I was staying with you in Austin, they were like, oh, okay, you got rich friends then. Uh, yeah, it's an expensive place to live. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, oh, I didn't realize Bell was as well off as he is. Uh, Bell, I've, mean, gotten an op- I've got an investment opportunity for you that I didn't realize I should be pitching you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I no. Uh, you know, you know the term "working poor." Yeah, uh, yeah, look, yeah, look yeah. that up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on, let me type in it. "Working poor." Oh, hey, look, there's your picture. Well, yeah, it, yeah, it's on Google Image Search. What do you know? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the story of my life. But, but yeah, it's it's you know, I, dude, everybody treated you like you were Madison, or like like that that space was like you know the Madison equivalent. Uh no, it, it's it's not Madison. It's more Ridgeland. Okay, well, the point is, everybody's like, oh, they say they're Austin, but they're not really Austin. Uh, yeah. So it's it's basically like Dallas, Dallas light. Okay. Well, but that's the thing. It's look. I, I'm sorry that I like to live in apartment complexes that aren't 40 years old. <laughs> and, you know, have freaking uh, air conditioners that that do not work, and you know they're, they're on constantly, and you have a $400 electricity bill, and your apartment's still 89 degrees every day. Hey, hey, I, look. I lived I lived in too many of those in Austin. Uh, and, and I, I just got tired of it. So, you know what? I was the first person to live in the apartment that I'm in right now. The that, building was built and I was the first person to move in this apartment and I've been there ever since. Oh, did you get like locked into like a nice price? Uh, no, my, 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 my rent's only gone up a hundred bucks in, in the four years that I've been living here, which is, which is astonishing considering some of the other, uh, uh, price increases that they've had. But no one lived in this apartment before me. All right. Well, hey, look, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, like, that was just that was the the general sense I got. I was like, oh, okay, I'm learning. I'm learning some stuff. I'm learning the the di- the, the dynamics of of the Austin. I mean, life. honestly, like you you take my rent that I pay and you go try to live somewhere downtown, and, and like I, I don't know, I don't understand what these people are like. What they <laughs> they haven't lived in Austin. They don't know. They don't know. All right. That's all I'm saying. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Can we talk about Star Wars? Uh, of course. <laughs> Lucas gonna sue somebody. <laughs> that trailer, dude. Uh, what trailer? Last Jedi. Oh, that trailer. Yeah, a, yeah. Psh, yes, that trailer. Yeah. What about it? Okay, so it. so wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I need to watch it again because I watched it like three or four times a day. It came out and I hadn't seen it since. Oh my! Like I literally. I stopped working like that trailer came out like in the morning. I couldn't get anything done. And I had a pile of work and I just, I think I even tweeted like specifically, like I've just given up trying to like trick myself into thinking I'm going to get anything done. Cause all I did that day was watch the trailer over again and try to pick fights on Twitter. <laughs> Star Wars fights on Twitter. And the other thing too, is that night I was like, well, that settles it. I'm, I'm watching rogue one tonight. And so I watched rogue one with the Mrs. It was her first time seeing it. And, um, and then actually after watching Rogue One, I went directly from watching that the ne- that weekend to watching uh, A New Hope. I actually introduced my my oldest, my four-year-old to A New Hope, to, to Star oh, Wars proper for the first time. And I realized in the crawl, I, I just it blew my mind, in the crawl, the very first paragraph is specifically referencing uh, Rogue One. I know most people know that. But I mean, like, I don't, I think it's like me seeing it for the first time after seeing Rogue One that there was this aha moment of like, oh, that's the victory. Oh, that's the team. Oh, that's the base. Like, that's, it's all that one paragraph they turned into what Rogue One was, which is freaking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I watched Rogue One again from the prospect of somebody who's never seen Star Wars before. I mean, it, it was kind of, <gasps> bad. I, I, wow. I fell asleep. Like uh, it was really late when I watched it, so I couldn't really finish it. But I, I, I did. It was interesting. I watched it from 
because a lot of the complaints that I've heard about Rogue One are that the uh, if you take Star uh, Star Wars out of the Rogue One, like it, it doesn't make any sense. Like the story didn't mm-hmm, make any sense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, one a pineapple. Yes, I have heard of Rooster Teeth. Uh, they're they're pretty cool. But uh, yeah, the but it was kind of neat though because I, I think they do enough that if you hadn't seen Star Wars, they it, it kind of works. Uh, but then again, I, it was really late when I watched it. So I did fall asleep through a lot of it. And, uh, so I don't really have all of that. Uh, but I'm, I'm the next time I watch it, the next time you watch it, the next time anybody watches it, pretend like you've never seen star Wars before and see if the story makes sense. Because I, if it I does, they did I a good can. job. I don't know if I can, like, I'm just, I'm too, I'm too in it. Like, I, I just can't have an objective. It's, it, you know, I think in many respects, I'm kind of feel like the, that way towards Marvel movies right now. Like at this point, I'm so invested. I don't know that I can have an objective opinion anymore. I mean, that's just self-awareness, but all right, return, uh, uh, last Jedi, the trailer came out. It was a teaser more, th- more so than a trailer. Thoughts? And it was confirmed that Jedi is singular in this context. Yes. Yes. A lot of people still arguing that that's not the case. The director has come out and said very specifically that in his mind, and this is the man that has seen the entire film in his mind, that term is singular in, in yeah, reference. It's here. always been singular to him. And that's so. You know, props to me for getting that right. I told yeah. you so. I told you so. I, I I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. <laughs> Who did you tell so? You and the rest of the internet. Did I? Did I, I? I don't. I don't remember what my opinion on it was. No, you pushed back. You said it was plural. Look, I need and I told you so. After getting like you know, like you know, sloshed. What's the word? Sloshed. Slashed. Uh, destroyed, lambashed, <laughs> like after, after getting completely sloshed by uh, my my uh, shellacked. That's what it is. After getting completely shellacked by my uh, my Savitar theory, I need and I told you so. So I think the last Jedi is going to be my, my, my I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting. Yes, uh, it's it's Luke Skywalker calling for the end of the Jedi. Yes. Yeah. Right. But so the way that I see it, and I've I've made this case for a couple of years now, based on what we got in the prequels, the Jedi Order almost kind of rep- represents, almost kind of like, uh, and this is in, in no offense to to Catholic listeners out there, I, I am half Catholic myself. I have a lot of love for for the Catholic Church, the Catholic faith, but I I almost see the the old Jedi Order as the Roman Catholic Church, and Luke. To some extent, Qui Gon, but but Luke being almost like kind of a Martin Luther, kind of a reformer, coming in to kind of kick off a new order, if you will. And so when he says that it's time for the Jedi to end, the way that I interpret that is like he tried to recreate the Jedi Order of yesteryear, and it doesn't work. It it is set up to fail. Like if you think about it, the Jedi Order produced this like the Sith to some extent. It, it produced Darth Vader. It produced its own downfall. Luke tried to do the exact same thing, had the exact same reaction. It is time for that order to end and for there to be something new. Luke is the great reformer of the Jedi Order, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that's what he's talking about. I think it's because like Qui-Gon was uh, somebody who dabbled in both uh, uh, dark side and light side uh, of the but, force. Uh, I, he was somebody who spoke truth to power. I don't know that I would say that Qui-Gon dabbled in the dark side, but he is somebody who recognized the like, you know, what, what, what do we know about the Sith? The Sith lie with the truth that is something that has been very consistent throughout the prequels especially but like they very specific even like uh vader talking to luke he's lying with the truth and the way that he is trying to seduce his son into the dark side and so that is something that the dark side does and when you see palpatine talking to anakin in revenge of the sith he talks about like the dogmatic view of the jedi like that's true the dogmatic nature of what the jedi order has been is part of what led to their downfall so he's to some extent he's twisting him he's lying with the truth and so that dogmatic nature of what the jedi order has been has to die i don't think it's a matter of like they have to like incorporate darkness or dark side into it i i reject that theory no no that's not what i'm saying that's okay, not what right, i'm saying right, it's, it's just that uh, uh qui-gon had more of an open mind about the force as a whole cuz cuz the jedi order the sith is bad the dark side is evil everything is wrong with it whereas qui-gon viewed it as uh you know uh let's not let's not go in and 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 immediately just decry everything about the dark side or everything about the sith or you know it's like let's have an open mind about everything and let, let's you know accept everything as, as it be, you know that that kind of that kind of mentality be skeptical about both the good and the bad and uh 
kind of like bridge everything together, I think is, is what he was, where he was coming from. Well, it's, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what, uh, I, 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 like I said, I think that Qui-Gon, Qui-Gon in my, my opinion represents the best kind of like, you know, one, one of the greatest Jedi in, in terms of being somebody who was part of that order, but spoke truth to it. He was a reformer within that system. Luke literally had the opportunity to create something new entirely. And I feel like, like the legacy, the Qui-Gon legacy to some extent kind of spoke to that and he didn't do it, or at least from what we've seen, he hasn't done that. And so when he says it's time for the Jedi order to end for him to say that in the exact same, you know, trailer slash teaser that we see him actively training Ray, I think he's training her for something else. I think he's training her for something new. I think you're right. Maybe it's the new Jedi order as uh, I think one of pineapple or, or somebody said in the chat just now, yeah, one of pineapple said in the chat. Maybe it's the new Jedi Order. Maybe it's a different term altogether. There's there's different arguments for what that looks like. I think it's a different structure around the light side. I don't think it's this idea of, you know, you have to be both dark and light. I think it's a different structure around that. But it's not as a it's not the dogmatic view that the I Jedi think it's Order it's yeah. If if you if you look at it in terms of uh of D and D alignments, the light side is lawful good. And the dark side is uh, chaotic evil. Right. And I think what Qui-Gon and what Luke is going towards is more of a chaotic good. Right. Right. Like, like, like there, there's, there's, uh, th- there's no sense in following laws of the Jedi order if it isn't for the, the, the best and the greater good that's and right. for the best of everybody. That's, so that's exactly so right. So they're, they're casting off that yoke of, of, of the Jedi order and these ancient rules and these ancient traditions when they don't make sense. That's right. And so that's the thing. Like, I feel like there's a discussion right now for those that kind of buy into that being the path that the, that the, that the Jedi, like that Luke wants to restructure. Some people are arguing that, that what, he, what he says or what they think that he's after is more of a chaotic neutral stance. And I don't think that's the case. No, I think it's chaotic. Good. I think, Oh he, dude, hang I, on. Huh? We're, get, we're getting hail. Really? Is that what that is? Yeah. Well, that's Mississippi for you. One minute it's hailing. The next minute it's going to be sunny, even though the sun's down. Oh snap. Is Last it breaking time? windows? Not yet, but it's like coming across. You, are you in the studio? Or are you? Uh, no, no you I'm, be in the studio. I'm at the I'm at the home setup here. If I had known this was going to happen, uh, I would have definitely man, parked the cars under the that's carport. Loud. Oh, is your car? Uh, yeah, I tell you what. So, uh, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut cut the feed here, um, so I can kind of figure out what's going on, make sure everybody's all right. Um, but my goal, by the way, is to uh, to do a um, live stream tonight. I'm going to jump on the uh, the YouTube gaming streaming channel and uh, and play some Injustice. I've been playing through Injustice: Gods Among Us. So, oh, uh, nice! Yeah, I'll post up the link on Twitter uh, if I do that in the next, hopefully, like ten minutes or so, assuming that everything doesn't get broken. Yeah, gosh, this is crazy. I, I did not know this was coming. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, um, Belt, I will uh, I'll talk to you next week. All right. Yeah. Good luck with all your pale. <laughs> Ah, uh, what the hell?